Good day everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Nate. Um, this is my video on a buyer's guide to Flaming Cliss 3 aircraft. I see a lot of videos uh, on YouTube and certainly a lot of comment sections on the EDs forums as well as, um, sorry, that's Eagle Dynamics forums for DCS and several other forums, maybe sometimes a BMS too. Um, out of the two Flame and Cliffs 3 aircraft, which are really seen as introductory aircraft of flight sims, which one should the people picked? And and this is a really divisive topic. Often when you actually tell people to pick one or the other, they can get pretty nasty, and I'm sure I'll get some comments saying X is better than Y because of this. Um, and there's a lot of politics behind it, often uh, anti-Russian or anti-American sentiment, but I'm going to try and bypass all of that and get to the gritty bits of it all. So we're going to talk about the F-15C and the SG-27 as your first buyer's choice into DCS. Um, if you want to pick up something easy, something that doesn't require a clicking cockpit and the many hours of studying and familiarization, these are the two aircraft that often get suggested and I'm here to help you decide um, which one's better. I'm, I'm hoping that it, even if it doesn't help you, it kind of nudges you towards one or the other because these are really good aircraft and even after many hours of flying complex aircraft like the MiG-21BIS and also um, to a lesser extent uh, the Hawk and to a greater extent the A-10, the A-10C that is, these are still very fun to play and very fun to, to dogfight in. Alright guys, so I'm just going to cut to uh, these aircraft in no particular order and then we'll just jump back in the end for a conclusion. So I'm just going to go take it away in the uh, first aircraft. So first up is the F-15C. The F-15C is a dedicated air superiority fighter. That means it does one thing and one thing only. It engages other aircraft. As of this moment in DCS and DCS 1.5, the F-15C has no capability to carry any ground attack ordnance. So it will just be hunting aircraft every time you log on and every time you fly this thing. It does this by using its powerful radar in conjunction with its weapons mounted on board externally. You can see here it's mounted with AM-120Cs uh, on, under the fuselage and on the outer wing pylon and an AIM-9 Sidewinder on the inner pylon. This, the AMRAMs are capable to be downgraded to AIM-7 Sparrows um, should the game ha server have limitations and the underwing pylons are only capable of carrying fuel tanks. That said, it's able to carry a lot of fuel and because of a lot of fuel tanks. So it has a total of eight pylons to carry missiles. Um, the four Sidewinder pylons are in the wings and all of the pylons can carry AIM-120Cs. It's also got a 20mm uh, Vulcan minigun for self-defense and dogfights. Uh, the F-15C is definitely a long-range uh, missile fighter. It does this very well, and in many respects it probably does it a little bit better than the, F the SU-27. Um, that said, that point is probably up for debate, um, but the F-15C is definitely nothing to laugh at. Um, although it is not as good up close as, at, as the SU-27 for aerodynamic reasons, which I won't go into here. Although the F-15 has a few tricks up its sleeve if it does get into close combat. That said, you'll need to be well versed in air combat maneuvering, knowledge of this aircraft, and knowledge of your opponent to pull off. It's not impossible, it's just a bit more technical. And technical is something the F-15 is very good at. If, you go, if I go into the cockpit here for a second. The F-15C has a very powerful radar and it, you need to use this very well. The radar here is seen that we've locked up an enemy fighter, which is a MiG-23. So using a combination of your situation awareness from the RWR and your powerful radar, you're able to actually dominate a lot of long-range uh, engagements. In this case, with the MiG-23 we locked up in, let me go look at here, 16 nautical miles away. Um, the F-15 can, like I said, hold its own up close, it's just not as good as the H-27s. Um, of course, the default F-15C doesn't have any clickable cockpits. It only really has this um, radar here that works, which I, when I unbox, I'll show you, and this MFD, which tells you which weapons you have, although the MFD itself is not usable. So let me just unpause to demonstrate. So here we have some fighter planes ahead of us, and we can lock them up. If I put them using the cursor key, which is by default the cheval keys, and lock them up. We'll get a note to fire. What you want to do is put your cursor over, aim up, and fire. Two, 
Now I'm going to pause here for a second to make to point out something. The AIM-120C is in fact a fire and forget missile. That is correct. Although it's worth pointing out, the AIM-120C is not as accurate, and and if you don't guide it with the onboard radar. So the weapon will fire and it will home roughly in the direction of the target. However, it will not activate the onboard um, weapon radar until it is within a certain range of the enemy aircraft. And that range, I believe, is about eight nautical miles. So while I, the missile, as you can see here, it has gone, it's still using the onboard radar of the track. So I could, in theory, turn away and the missile would roughly guide to where it thinks the target is. There is a good chance if the enemy aircraft maneuvers hard enough, it will break the lock because the missile, when it activates its own radar, will not be able to see the target when it's there. So the F-15C, you need to be sure that when you go into combat, you're firing your weapons effectively. You can fire all the missiles you want, and one will probably hit, but you're not an efficient use of an, of an aircraft, and so not an efficient use of your armed weapons, and will leave you very vulnerable to a counterattack. Um, that said, I think we've covered enough now of the F-15 to move on to the next aircraft. So off to the uh, Su-27. The Su-27 in DCS is the Russian counterpart of the F-15C. They are very similar in, in some ways, such as the fact that they're both twin-engine fighters, although the Su-27 is a multi-role fighter plane. It is capable of carrying uh, air-to-ground munitions, which include rocket pods and free-fall bombs, to attack ground targets. While these are very limited in what kind of targets you can hit, they are still interesting and make it a more interesting choice than the F-15C in that respect. They both also carry large amount of weaponry. If we go to the, the bottom of the SG-27 here, you can see it has 10 hard points for air to air munitions. Uh, the outer two hard points on each wing is only capable of carrying the infrared missile, and it's also carrying six long range missiles in this case. Worth noting is that it has less long range missiles than the F-15C, but more close range missiles than the F-15C, which really does reflect on how the Su-27 wants to be employed. The Su-27 is really a close range fighter. It is highly maneuverable and is capable of doing some very, very, very unique aer uh, aerobatic stunts, of which you may be familiar with, but if you've seen the Su-27 do the famous Cobra maneuver, of which it goes vertical and then comes back around after it appears to have stalled. Um, although in the whole time the pilot is actually quite in control of the aircraft. So very high, very high angles of attack um, and very maneuverable. The difference really is in the nose area. If we look at the nose in particular, the IRST, the infrared search track device seen here in front of the nose is what really separates this th than the F-15 other than the uh, car flight characteristics. The RST is able to track targets using infrared, that is heat signature of the enemy aircraft, without activating its radar, which is a very, very good advantage to have in a, in a long-range fight. So, while not as powerful and certainly not as long-range in terms of its search capability as the F-15's radar, it's still interesting to use, and given enough cunning and guile, you are able to maneuver often um, behind the F-15 or engage it from an angle without it knowing you're there. So that in combination with maybe AWACS as well. The Su-27 also has a unique capability to the Russians, um, at, at least of DCS 1.5 right now, for the off-board helmet. And I'm just going to unpause it for a second. If I go to mode 7, sorry, mode 5, which is 5 on your joystick, you see a ring comes up. This gives you your heat-seeking weapons um, off-board capability. This normally is a 30 degree off the off the nose left and uh, left or right to fire off the missile. So the missile is able to lock a target uh, once uncaged and tracking whatever you're looking at. So if I look over here it will track, it will lock up and it will track. This is a very adva uh, huge advantage to have in a close range fight and this is one of the one of the reasons why the SU-27 is such a dangerous foe up close. It is able to get off shots you don't think it has the angle to do so because often you're turning in a tight turn and you think you can't possibly fire off a missile and then whoosh you see an R-60M or, um, or, or, or a similar grade infrared missile in close combat come up and then you've had it. There's very little you can do. You're not expecting it. So this is the advantage of the SU-27. Um, so I'm just going to go back to the main screen because I think this 
really nails it here that th that the big difference between two fires and I'll go into it in the uh, conclusion video so just get jump join me guys in the next part of the video alright guys so welcome back um, so hopefully that was enough information to give you um, either to make a educated decision or just something to give some give you some more to think about in terms of which one you prefer so really it to conclude the f-15c great long-range air-to-air fighter capable in dogfight although requires a high degree of technical know-how in terms of operating its radar and dogfighting a, sup uh, a aerodynamically superior foe um, and, and also you'll also be able to manage your engine and speed because of that for that reason um, often the speed cited for entering emerges 450 and you want to try and keep it above a certain speed the SU-27 on the other hand fantastic multi-role able to do air-to-ground air-to-air fantastic aircraft to do aerobatics and also great to do dogfights because of its advantages up close although at a slight disadvantage on long range and that really sums up I feel the video or at least these two aircraft very well um, obviously if neither of these appeal to you then maybe you should consider one of the other aircraft like the F5 Tiger or the MiG-20 Abyss um, which the, the that last one I particularly enjoy um, but I think that's it for me today if you guys have any questions about these two aircraft um, feel free to pop, pop them in the comments below. I did, I think I know with the F-15, I did mention a few technical things about employing employing the AMRAM, so that might confuse people a bit, or people might have more questions about that. And certainly, I think I didn't cover the S-27 is as much detail as the, um, in its infrared stuff, but I feel like that's enough to go on, like, that that is the that is a unique feature that it has an infrared tracking mode that makes it a little bit harder to detect um, in for the F-15. All right, guys. Well, until next time, this is Nate out.